Welcome aboard! For not all who are descended from Israel are Israel. Okay. What Paul has in mind here is something the Jews know about. Um, Christians, not so much, I guess. But what it is, is Paul is saying that of the 70 sons of Jacob that went down into Egypt in Genesis 46, we know that not all of them ended up constituting the nation. And we can tell from a, a census that was taken after the Exodus when the children of Israel were in the plain of Moab, a census was taken, and this is in Numbers 26. And the purpose there was for the dividing up of the promised land among the sons of Israel. And what you notice is that not all the sons of Jacob are included. And let me show you what I mean. In Genesis 46, the sons of Simeon. Okay, notice this enumeration. Okay, see Ohad here? When you go to Numbers 26, Ohad is not enumerated. See that? Okay. So, Ohad is missing in the census. Likewise, if you come down to Benjamin, the sons of Benjamin, in Genesis 46, there are 10 sons enumerated, okay? But when you go to Numbers 26 and scroll down to Benjamin, notice only five of the 10 are enumerated here. So we lose five here, six altogether. Six families of the sons of Jacob were never incorporated into the nation and her constitution. They were never given an inheritance in the promised land. And this concept, again, this is... This is something the Jews knew about. For not all who are descended from Israel are Israel. So not all the sons of Jacob are Israel. See, this is something the Jews knew about. And in fact, in Rabbah Numbers, Volume 2, at the Internet Archive, when you flip to Numbers 26 and read, you can see the rabbis talking about this. And they describe why this is. These uh, six tribes went a whoring after Balaam or something like that. Uh, you can read it. I'll give a link in the description. But that's important, and it's just important to understand Paul's argument here. It's, it's not as though God's word has failed, for not all who are descended from Jacob are Israel, you see. And likewise, uh, not all of Abraham's children are included in the outworking of the word of God. Just Isaac, right? The son of promise. But it's not as though God's word had failed, see? And so that's the argument Paul's making here. And he goes on to use Jacob and Esau and so forth. And I just bring this up because there is 
there are theologies out there that want to take this piece of this particular verse, Romans 9, 6, this is crucial to them. They want to take this piece of this verse and tell you that what it means is that really only part of Israel is truly Israel, spiritual Israel. So they want you to think that the term Israel has multiple meanings. And then they feel they have license to decide which meaning Paul has in mind whenever he uses the term Israel. But that just isn't legitimate. Israel just means Israel, folks, in Romans 9, 6 and everywhere else. I believe down here in verse 31, you can tell what Israel means. It's not hard. Uh, the first verse in chapter 10. You know what Israel means. In chapter 11, they'll say in verse 7, What then? What the people of Israel sought so earnestly, they did not obtain. The elect among them did, but the others were hardened. They'll read this and say, Oh, well, this is the first use of Israel. It's just the old wicked nation there. And then when they come down here and it says, it, it says, and in this way, all Israel will be saved. They'll say, oh, this is uh, the second meaning here. This is the true spiritual meaning. You see how they are subjectively pouring different meanings now into the word Israel and it is theological presuppositions that will be driving this decision-making in these different verses. And this is all very bad news. This is bad scriptural exposition. This is not solid forward scriptural exposition. God did not morph Israel into some different entity. He did not morph the meanings of the covenants into different things. And a theology that plays around with the Bible and tries to have that is no good theology at all. Now, set your secret decoder like this for code A3. Then decode this important clue to next week's adventure. If you don't have your decoder badge, here's how you can get one for your very own. First, get a jar of the official Secret Squadron drink, delicious chocolate-flavored Ovaltine, the food drink for rocket power. Then, cut out the wax paper disc that covers the Ovaltine jar. And send that disc with your name, your address, to me, Captain Midnight, Box P, Chicago 77, Illinois.